One of the most challenging parts of this introductory unit, particularly if it's been a little while since you've finished your math ten prerequisite, is equation solving or rearranging a formula. I'll give you a quick overview of this concept here, then we'll include some other examples later. In your math classes, you've solved equations for a variable. For example, 3x plus 2 equals 8, and solve for x. We remember that solving for x means, from a conceptual point of view, finding an x that would make this equation true if we plugged it in. Or from a more procedural point of view, solving for x means getting the x all by itself on one side of the equal sign, or isolating the variable, as is sometimes said. So let's, here, isolate the x in this example. So to get the x on its own, we'll first notice that we don't want this 2 here. It's out of place. We're currently adding the 2, so to remove it, we'll simply do the opposite and subtract by 2. Now whatever we do to the one side of the equal sign, we also do to the other. So we subtract a 2 over here as well. I like to draw a line across here just to finish off that step. The plus 2 and the minus 2 on the left cancel each other out as planned. And on the right, we have the 8 minus 2 gives us 6. So we're closer to having this x isolated. But to get the x by itself totally, we'll have to also get rid of this 3 here. It's also at a place. We're currently multiplying the x by 3, so the opposite of this is dividing it by 3. Again, whatever we do to the one side, we also do to the other. So the 3's cancel on the left here, one on the top and one on the bottom, and on the right we have the 6 divided by 3 gives us 2. Hopefully that all looks familiar to you. I wanted to start with that and then move to rearranging when there's multiple variables. As you'll be able to see that it's the exact same steps. So let's use for our example AT plus V naught equals VF and we're solving for T. So before we carry on let's just quickly give you a foreshadow of later units by pointing out what these variables really represent here. So the A represents acceleration, the T represents time, V naught represents the initial or starting velocity of some object, and the VF represents the final velocity of this object. Now you didn't really need to know that to do this part of the course, but I just wanted to quickly point those out. So back to the rearranging here. So if we compare this equation with our previous one, we can see that they're the same type of equation. Simply stated, in the previous example, a was the 3. The x is now time. The initial velocity, v naught was 2. And the final velocity was 8. So they all line up here. Thus, solving for t instead of x in our previous one should be pretty darn similar. In the previous example, we started isolating the x by noticing that the 2 was out of place. So we subtracted it. In this case, the 2 is instead v naught. So let's do the same thing, and to get rid of it, we subtract v naught. Now remember, whatever we do to one side, we also do to the other. On the left, just like before, the v naught and the minus v naught cancel each other out, and on the right, we have it as vf minus v naught. In the previous example, we could reduce this down to one number. This is true. In this case, we have to leave it as vf minus v naught knowing that we may end up with those numbers later, and then we'll know what to do with them. 
for now we just have to say vf has to be subtracted by v naught. So we're closer to isolating the t, but to get it totally by itself, we have to get rid of this a. In the same way that we recognize that the x was being multiplied by 3 in the previous example, we see that the t is currently being multiplied by an a. So we do the opposite, which means we divide by a. And whatever we do to one side, we also do to the other. So we divide both sides by a, and on the left, the a's cancel out, one on the top and one on the bottom, and on the right, we divide the whole thing, vf minus v naught, with an a. So our final answer of t equals vf minus v naught over a is not quite as pretty as finishing with one single number, but it's much more useful, as you'll learn later. So in this tutorial, you learned that rearranging formula with multiple variables isn't really much different than the solving problems that you did in math class. You have to keep track of more things, but the steps are the same. If you ever get puzzled with a rearranging problem in physics here, some people find it handy to pull out an extra page and just replace a bunch of the variables with numbers. And this sometimes triggers your memory and helps you determine what to do next, because it's a little more familiar maybe to you at this point. These skills, though, will take your math knowledge to a very useful and powerful level, as you are now able to generally represent relationships. And these relationships help scientists and engineers design and simulate all types of things. It's also extremely key to all the sophisticated game designing that you ran into.